discuss the assessment of the good work that we have done during the past years and defining a new direction for the coming years in making the Gambia a more resilient nation to disasters. With the UN support, the Office of the Vice President and the NDME will be working with your support to use this report and its recommendations to prepare a new long-term strategy and an operational plan for disaster risk reduction in this country. Disaster risk reduction calls for broad and concerted efforts that should involve all and sundry, can add it. Disaster strikes, everybody is affected, irrespective of your age, irrespective of your social status, irrespective of your age. And therefore, it is everybody's business. And that's why we are here trying to look at disaster risk reduction, linking it to food security, linking it to security, linking it to tourism, linking it to all aspects of the economy. It is hoped that at the end of the interface, participants will scrutinize and find the draft ahead of the finalization. The validated document is expected to leave the Gambia a better place to access the risks of disasters, especially man-made calamities and climate change, and reduce their impact on the citizenry. For GHS News, I am the Kumadema. Banjulians recently converged to remember the past and preserve the rich culture the island city is known for. Organizers of the 13th Banjul Demba Cultural Extravaganza are, among other things, seeking to add burnish to the history and the enduring values of the island that is fast turning into a microcosm of West Africa. Ibrahima Jata reports on the latest effort to preserve Banjul's rich cultural heritage for generations to come. In a battle of three decades, the global HIV response strategy has entered a new phase. The launch in New York of the new HIV response strategy, Getting to Zero, means countries are confident that zero new infections, zero discrimination and zero AIDS related deaths are within reach. However, in achieving that global agenda, young people constitute key players. It is in view of this that the National Youth Council, in collaboration with UNAIDS, recently convened a two-day training for young people in HIV AIDS, drugs and alcohol abuse, thus empowering them with knowledge, a weapon for HIV AIDS prevention, especially for vulnerable people like youths. Whilst I'm not uh, trying to downplay the laudable efforts and gain registered in the national response, I strongly believe that our approach should be co comprehensive, universal, and focus on the key drivers of vulnerability of young people. We should focus on programs that ensure the protection of young people and enhance their capacity to actively participate in shaping their future. For this, education has a very vital role to play. According to statistics, more than half of infected people globally are youths between the ages of 15 and 24. Ironically, however, in countries where HIV AIDS is going through downward trends, the credit goes to the same youths. But why are they playing the two roles? What is it that they need to be useful in the national HIV response strategy? Infected. Strategically, in the Gambia, all what is needed as stakeholders in the response is to continue and accelerate our prevention programs by educating young people for behavioral change. For no assessor of UN AIDS, getting to zero entails the world's readiness to take on the scars left by the HIV AIDS epidemic. These, he said, include Many young Africans are forced to end their education early and a growing number must grow up as orphans because of AIDS-related illnesses. Gender-based inequalities persist such that girls do not reach their full potentials and boys have a false sense of power and domination. These factors give rise to sexual and reproductive health problems exhibited by risk-taking behaviors such as drug, alcohol or substance abuse, early sexual debut, limited access to basic social services. Although HIV AIDS has a primary cause, drug abuse contributes to new infections. The primary route of HIV transmission in the region is unprotected heterosexual contact. However, it is believed that injecting drug use can initiate new epidemics or accelerate existing ones. Statistics shows that the Gambia registered only a few cases of drug-related HIV infections due to the strong campaign launched by government. However, in the new phase of HIV response, the world wants to zero new infections by 2015. 
hence the need to take all necessary precautions. This workshop is a case in point. Modula Min Sise, GRCS News. Well, we apologize for playing the wrong report. That is actually a forum that attracted the participation of young people on HIV and AIDS, drugs and alcohol abuse. Banjulians recently converged to remember the past and preserve the rich culture the island city is known for. Organizers of the 13th Banjul Demba Cultural Extravaganza are, among other things, seeking to add burnish to the history and enduring values of the island that is fast turning into a microcosm of West Africa. Ibrahim Ajata reports on the latest efforts to preserve Banjul's rich cultural heritage for generations to come. <laughs> The beauty of the city's olden days always reappear in complete apparel when Banjul meets to recall and celebrate the past. It was an action-packed event which roused the glory of Banjul's history, explaining the Gambia's cultural diversity and the enduring efforts to sustain the strong values which bind its people. It is very important because young people are actually the future leaders of uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow they become uh, responsible adults, tomorrow they become responsible family heads. You know, and uh, they too will have to bring, or bring, their, or bring their own young uh, children. So it is very important that you know, they have the foundation, that they understand their culture. Uh, then uh, they would be proud of themselves and proud of their background and uh, be able to know uh, what role they should play. As the city revisits its past, the future is being given renewed attention. The message from the event was basically for young people who formed the majority at this sparkling occasion. I think um, uh, it uh, shows that uh, Banjul, like all other cities of the world, are usually um, are very cosmopolitan. You know, people from diverse backgrounds come to converge on the city because of what the city offers. And uh, therefore, the city of Banjul uh, comprises um, uh, of uh, the uh, diverse ethnic groups that constitute the population uh, of the Gambia. And uh, as you know, um, uh, the uh, promotion of cultural diversity is one of the cornerstones uh, of um, uh, the cultural policy of the Gambia because we recognize the fact that um, uh, the Gambia is made up of different ethnic groups and therefore all of these ethnic groups have their own distinct cultures which should be preserved, uh, promoted and uh, developed uh, for posterity. Uh, and uh, I think um, uh, it is the appreciation of this diversity uh, that underlies, uh, on, uh, underlies the uh, peace and unity, you know, uh, that Banjul and indeed the Gambia, you know, uh, is, is known for. The impressive serial Jula and Wall of Dance mode manifested vividly, reincarnated the beautiful cultural wealth still rife in the city, despite the contemporary sophistication of times. The night was capped by the awarding of gifts and sponsorship packages to a host of young people for the advancement of educational pursuits. Ibrahim Ajata. GRTS. Well, you can follow that story and other GRTS programs live on our website, and that's on www.grts.gm. There you can also monitor GRTS radio live. Time now to take our first break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned in. Welcome back. Many countries of the African Union have failed to agree to elect a new head of the African Union Commission. The two candidates vying for the position, current commission chair, Gabonese Jean Peng, and South African Interior Minister Kusana Dalamani Zuma could not win a clear margin during the voting, with little to separate the two in the elections. Continental leaders agreed to put off the voting until June 2012 when they meet for another summit. We have details in this report. Meeting at their headquarters in Addis Abeba, the heads of African Union states were unable to elect a new leader for the AU Commission. After three days of voting, the incumbent president, Jean Ping, had a slight lead. His main opponent, Nkosana Dlamani Zuma, then pulled out of the race. But in the fourth round of voting, Jean Ping had 32 people for him, not the two-thirds needed, or 36 votes. So the choosing of the next president was put off until the summit in June, and an interim head was named. Nobody won and nobody lost, but the two days of deal-making showed the divisions in the African Union. Leading the commission of the AU since 2008, 
the former foreign affairs minister from Gabon, who had a long career.